Probably one of the most common things that happens in Hebrew Roots Movement, Messianic Movement, Seventh-day Adventist Movement, or any type of Christian endeavor where you have people who get together who aren't Jewish trying to explain Hebrew, you usually find them adding their own ideas into the reality of what the Bible is in Hebrew. Because you see, we have an accurate and we have a provable source that we can always go to. We call it the Hebrew Scriptures. And we can always go back to the Old Testament and look and see the scroll of Isaiah and prove that against the Dead Sea Scrolls. Is there any difference in the Dead Sea Scrolls of what was written there and what we have today? In other words, you can prove the facts about what is being presented to you by some Hebraic, Messianic, or Gentile Christian source versus the accuracy of the scriptures as God used his chosen people in order to bring to us the Bible as it is. I always find it interesting because I was involved in the Messianic movement in the early days with chosen people ministries, with Jews for Jesus. I've lived in Jerusalem for 14 months. I was there at the turn of the century. I've seen all of these different movements come along and as they fade away, another one jumps up and tries to take his place whether it be the House of Yahweh down in Texas that got shut down by the, the state government because they weren't paying taxes, or whether it be the whole idea of this Aramaic heresy that came along that said, oh, Jesus spoke Aramaic only. You see, there's always someone that comes along that wants to change or add to or rearrange the scriptures. What you have is an accurate, detailed, communicative device, even as Chuck Missler, a very well-known Bible scholar, will tell you. You don't change the word to fit your theology. That's called tendentialism. The Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for adding one little letter into First John, or into John, where they say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was a God. They try to add the participle there to make the Hebrew say something it doesn't. And they were busted for it. The same thing is true when a person comes up to you and tells you about Yeshua. They try to say to you that there is a Yahushua. In other words, they want to change the word in order to fit their idea. Because where it came about was in the, oh, I think it was a hundred years ago, approximate, maybe even less than that, the sacred name movement came up out of the Seventh-day Adventists. And there was this whole idea that they wanted to change the I, J, to be a Y, which was understandable. I mean, we do use a Y because in Hebrew there is no J, which is okay. I mean, if you want to say Yehovah, that's understandable. You want to say Yahweh, most people know what you're talking about. But when you start changing consonants, when you start changing and adding vowels, then you start doing what the Jehovah's Witnesses did. You become likened unto a cult. You do something the Hebrew letters themselves do not tolerate or allow for because you are able to tell by the equilateral distancing of the letters themselves that God has placed every single yard and tittle inside of the scripture for a reason. Why? To prove that he is the one that inspired it. When you try to do that with any other book, all the extra books like the book of Barnabas or any other book that you want to add, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. The computations do not work. However, when you stay with the text as they are, when you stay with your Bible that you've been given, then you are able to prove that God inspired these writers, all 66 of them, to speak, to write, and to give you the Word of God that you have in your hands. Now, you're going to see that there's people that are going to come out here and they're going to try to say, well, you know, Jesus, you can't say Jesus because they didn't say Jesus back in the early days. Let me uh, clarify that for you. Baloney. They were able to speak Greek as easily as they speak Greek today because guess what? Jews weren't ignorant people. I mean, come on. Where do you get this whole concept idea, Gentile, that somehow Jews were stupid and that they couldn't speak Greek when they lived in Greek cultures, when they were all over the world at the time of Jesus? Are you trying to tell me that the Roman culture didn't have Greek-speaking Jews who wrote the scriptures into Greek for the Romans to understand? Are you telling me that Greek sages and writers who were interpreting for the Roman army didn't know how to speak Greek and write Greek in order to know what to put on the scriptures? Then we have the Masoretic text. 
Please, let's go well. If you're going to do your history and you're going to create some false idea, at least do your homework. Because you see, anybody that's into the Sikh name movement never goes to a Jew. They don't ask a Jew what it says. They don't ask a Jewish rabbi what it means. Because the rabbi would say, ha, well, Sonny, when you grow up, you know, then you want to study Hebrew, then you come back and talk to me. But otherwise, if you want to make up some kind of street lingo, and you want to kind of change the word of God, and you want to take away from the very reality of what a Jewish sage is able to do with the stroke of the yod and the, uh, the very highlighting of the, the yod and the tittle and the very lamed that he writes here, then what are you doing? You're saying that they don't know what they're doing? Good! Show me your proof! Show me your evidence! Tell me that you're right! I want to see that in Isaiah! Guess what? We have the proof! We have the Ted C. Scrolls! We have the scriptures! Yahushua is made up. Yahushua and all these other yayas and yoyas that they come up with is just a bunch of toys that are playing with boys that think they know what they're doing. They get a hold of the internet and they go, Oh, let's do this. Let's make this website and we're going to take all this research and we're going to add the Yahushua in front of it. And we're going to try to change things and try to rearrange it to add in and make us part of the rest of the Christian world. But unfortunately, there's some people out there that say, no, I'm sorry. When you change a name, even when Orthodox Jews tried to change the name Yeshua to Yesha, which was a curse word, I'm sorry, you just can't go there. Yahushua is as false as it comes. There is no such a word. There's no such a anywhere in recorded Hebrew a word like that. Yahushua is Joshua. We know that. Such a deal. We know what the words mean. It is Jesus. Jesus was used in the Greek. Yahushua ben David was his name when he went into temple. He had a Hebraic, whoa, Hebraic. How about a Jewish, oh, Jewish. How about a Hebrew name that he used in temple? Just like I have a Hebrew name when I go in the temple. Just like if you're Jewish, you have a Hebrew name that you use in temple. But your normal name that you use out in the world for business is often different. My name is Michael James Stone. Hello. My Hebrew name is Ibn Mechal Yaakov. So what? Guess what? I don't go around saying, hey, I'm a Ben Abram. I've been around forever. No. Because for Jews, we would know what a Ben Abram is. You know, we understand that. You know, hey, we talk, you know, oh, come on, visit my family. Hey, come on over. But unfortunately, when I get around Gentiles, they go, Oh, super Joe! Oh, please tell me! No! I'm just Michael. And the reality is, is that I'm a Jesus freak, and I've been around since the early Jesus movement. I had phenomenal experiences. And now we get these Seventh-day Adventists that jumped in the bandwagon and said they want to bring their theology and their idealism about what they don't get provable into what they can't prove, and then they want to tell Jews that the Hebrew that they use regularly is wrong. Hello? Yahushua is made up. Anything that's beyond the literal word of God is wrong. Come on, you already know that. Anybody that's watching the videos that are watching some Yahya making a Yahoo of himself because he wants to make a name for himself on the internet by suddenly putting together some kind of Oh, we discover something new. We can be just like the cults too. And we can invent this rap Hebrew that's not Hebrew. Oh, really? So how would we prove it? How can you prove it? Hmm. Let's see. You can't find Yahushua anywhere in Scripture, so you have to take what's already there, yod hey vav hey, yod hey vav hey. That's a vav. And you got to change the vav, and you got to slip it in somehow, snickily. you got to kind of like, let's just call it a yod hey vav hey. Wait a minute. The Gentiles didn't catch that. The guy said, Yod hey, wah hey. Wah wah? Are we baby talking? We can't say vav. We can't say vav with a v. But they're going to throw a w in there. Because they want to change the word from v to w. So that they say the shin is a wah. A wah? Are you kidding me? What's a wah? That's a baby talk. There is no wah in Hebrew. Sorry. Such a deal.
I know you think it looks like a W, but we call it a show, and we call it a sin. It looks like a W, but in our language, it's not a W. Whoops. Who let the Gentile out? <laughs> you see, there's too many people not knowing what they're talking about, telling people what they think they know, when in reality, whoa. When they get proven wrong, the first thing they got to do is go running back to, oh, no, you know, we got to fight against that, you know, because we got the truth, you know, and even though we had to invent it to get there, we're going to fight to the death to believe in what we want to get you to believe in, which is only use the sacred name. Excuse me. Jewish scholars know what the name is. It's yud heh vav -Hey. There's a reason why it's called I am that I am, or I will be that I will be, and there's a reason why we can translate it that way, because we do know. It's not such a big deal. It's only when Gentiles get involved that somehow they make it into this, oh, 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 oh. they just said it, they didn't want to say it because they just want to honor God. It's not such a big deal. It's not like, oh, there's a mystery. They couldn't think of it. Oh, I'm so stupid. Then we don't have it recorded anywhere. Of course not, you know, being Jewish that we are. Ha. No, we wouldn't do that. Let's see. Is it written there? Is it written there? We forgot! We're Jewish! We're dumb! Please, get a grip on it. Don't fall for this stupid Yahushua stuff. Read your Bible. Go to the Internet. Ask Google. Put in the word. Look for it. See if it makes sense. See if they've changed it. Because one of the slick things about marketing is that when you're trying to really try to get somebody to come along with your little ideas and you really want someone to be deceived, you don't try to give them some outside source. You want them to check your inside source. Well, don't listen to them. They're all wrong. Listen to me. I'm right. No. I don't even say listen to me. You check your Jewish source. I don't care where you go. Don't check your Jewish messianic source because most of the messiantics that are going on with messianic aren't Jewish! Go to some place that is verifiably Jewish. Go to Jews for Jesus. Wow, there's a novel idea. I wonder what Jews for Jesus would say about Yahushua. Oh, I think they already did. Why not go to another Jewish site? How about HebrewForChristians.com? Hmm, that's written by a Jew! That, let's see, he's also the one who produced Hebrew for Christians for Zola Lovett. Oh, Zola Lovett! Maybe we should ask him! Hmm, what would Zola Lovett say about Yahushua? Eh. Hmm, let's see, we got two out of three. Uh, we got two Jewish sources. Let's see, can we go for a third? Oh, wait a minute, we got Hebrew for Christians, we got Zola Lovett, and we got Jews for Jesus. Let's check chosen people. What would chosen people say? They're all Jewish! Eh. Man, can we get a Jewish source somewhere to agree that Yahushua is the proper way to say it? No, you can't. You see, it has to be an American, quote-unquote, he says he's a Jew. He wears a tie. He's a you know, he's a little, you know he's just, well, he might be Jewish. He's American. And he says, Yahushua is right. Right. And he comes from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Or he comes from the Church of God. Or he comes from all these Christian backgrounds. And yet, not one doctorate in Hebrew, not one person can prove through paleontology, through Hebrew language, through any of these sources that are provable on the Internet, and accurate as we hold the Bible in our hands, that God is spoken of as a Yahoo. <laughs> Excuse me, there's no Yahushua. It's Yahushua. And it is Yeshua. Because Yahushua is Joshua, Yeshua is shortened for it, and Jesus, yes, is the Greek form of Yeshua, and it is the Greek form of Yahshua, and it is the Greek form of Joshua, and it is the Greek form of what we say today, so it is a name in which the Gentiles shall trust. So why do we make a big deal out of the name? Because it fulfills prophecy. You have no prophecy with Yahushua. It's a false name. Nobody believes it. Everybody's been selling it. Sorry, you're a used car salesman. It ain't working. The car came home and it's a lemon. 
Now I gotta make lemonade out of some crazy idea that some guy made up years ago, and now they're trying to repackage it and format it, and you know, we're gonna put it into prophecy, and we're gonna slip it into all these different places so that everybody's gonna accept it and just think that, oh, we we'll look at it all along. By golly, I think we need to accept all this cult ideal ideologies that bring in these false concepts of adding consonants, changing the scriptures, rearranging the vowels, and even making up words? <sighs> My God. If it wasn't for grace, I'd say burn them. I'd say, God, can't you do something about these people? You know what? Jesus did. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. All you have to do is find out from Jesus whether it's true or not. All you need to do is ask him, because Jesus said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who abradeth not, but giveth to all men liberally. If you don't have a personal relationship with God, you can. You can directly ask God, and God will directly speak to you. God will directly show you. God will give you his spirit, and his spirit will lead you to the truth, and he will show you what the facts are. Jesus is alive. You can contact him. Jesus is well. You can hear from him. Jesus is the Son of God. You can know him. Jesus is God. And so don't accept any other person, place, or thing that tries to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus because the reality of Yeshua HaMashiach is that we have a Messiah. We have a Christ. We have a name. We have a person, and Jesus, by any other name, guess what? If it isn't in Scripture, it isn't a name. It's just a made-up game that they're playing with names. Unfortunately, guess what? That's also called a lie. And in these latter days, the lies are being made manifest. But the light has come into the world, and they which are in darkness will not come to the light lest their deeds be shown for what manner they are.